Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the Knife Guy vs Corbo in the first semi-final of the first North American tournament. Today we're going to be seeing Point de Hoc and on the Allied side we have the 7th Armoured and on the Axis side it's going to be the 3rd Jäger. and you guessed it, Corbo is going to be using that. So, Corbo getting the division that he absolutely loves and is very good at, but the knife guy is certainly a good player and is using a very strong division in the 7th Armoured. Of course, there is the two Stuarts early on that can make a lot of ground and definitely put a lot of pressure onto the unit composition that Corbo has to offer. And things like the L6s, of course the Falschmjägers if they get spotted before the 150 meter range. And they will all get demolished by the Stuarts. So that's something that Corbo is going to have to be very careful of. And maybe he'll have to rely on Falschm Panzer Abwehr, um, Panzer Shrex, even like Puptions and stuff. Just to sort of ambush the armor that the 7th Armored can use early on. But where the armor is not, that may be something that Corbo can exploit with his L6s and his sort of chaotic gameplay um, based around the SBW AB41s and the L6s. So for example, if the L6s avoid the Stuarts and go elsewhere, then the knife guy could find uh, Corbo has a salient on his side of the map. But we'll have to wait and see. Let's see what's actually going down. So the knife guy on this top side is gonna be bringing in the Stuart 5. There's gonna be the Stuart Recky there with a recon followed up by Desert Rats and two Crusader AA Mark IIs at the start. That is quite considerable AA for a start. Um, there is going to be one motorized rifles heading down the main road, probably just to occupy one of these buildings. And then we've got motorized rifles and Desert Rats, um, two, two sets of those uh, just covering the mid and bottom side. Over on the side of Corbo, he's got Jägers and some recon for the top side. It's going to be Jägers for the mid, Jägers further down, and Jägers at the bottom as well with more recon. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units of Jägers. So there must be a plane that Corbo has bought because that's definitely not enough points worth of infantry at the start of the game to stop him buying a plane. So I reckon he has an ME109 on standby or something. But either way, we are off, and um, it looks like this concentrated push on the top side from the knife guy is going to be where he commits. And honestly, with even just one Stuart 5 plus the Stuart Recky fire support, it's going to rip to shreds the defense that Corbo has here. Um, these Crusader AA Mark IIs, I mentioned how they're significant AA, but what they are also is significant ground support. Um, they can use that 11 HE to fire at infantry, for example, and, and do a lot of damage very quickly. So we're seeing 51%. Um, looks like Corbo's not necessarily going to get too aggressive uh, with his unit placement. Obviously, he does need to be wary of a push coming his way. This white truck, that's just going to be zooming all the way forwards as it peaks over this hill, though. Going to have to be careful. Ocean Panzer Abwehr have found their way into the windmill, so they're going to be trying to ambush any units from there. But honestly, I'm pretty worried for Corbo at the start here. There is a Staghound coming to the bottom side. We can see these Volschmiegers trying to move forwards. They might end up opening up with the Brens, never mind. The Brens are actually turned off. So nice job there by the knife guy to make sure that he doesn't take an engagement he doesn't want. Because then at close range, his 12 HE trumps the Jäger's 6. And that is a really, really good engagement for uh, the knife guy down there. On this top side, Jägers do take a little bit of damage from the Desert Rats. Stuart Recky is going to be pushing through, however, and trying to find line of sight onto that engagement. Jägers here are going to be forced back. The M5 half-track might even look for a surrender. Panzer Abwehr do take out the Stuart. That's going to reveal their location which is not good because now the Stuart V and the Crusader AA Mark IIs can pretty much fire position that building. And that's going to be really difficult for Corbo to stop. 
he will have to run away and find a new place to hide, which honestly from that position is going to be pretty hard. Either way, Fulsham Jaegers further down, they've been found. Wow, they're taking a ton of damage very quickly indeed. These Fulsham Jaegers have been pushed back on the bottom, but two L6s are going to be arriving down there. It's this top side we really need to worry about for Corbo. Uh, Corbo did manage to absolutely demolish the Desert Rats at range. He's going to be trying in to get into heavy cover here maybe as well with his uh, Fulsham Jaegers. Then he can maybe look for, for a... Uh, 150 meter engagement we'll have to wait and see either way um, in the mid again Fulsham is losing out because of the armored support that the uh, seventh armored has these half tracks they're not really enough to commit an aircraft to destroy um, so they're just really irritating for the Fulsham who can't really deal with them at that sort of range not without the support of for example an L6 there is a pack 48 Gerlich coming on on the top side that's very very important he's going to need that to take out the crusade aa mark twos and the stuart five um Fulsham panzer Abwehr are likely to be spotted by the recce uh, one thing that corbo could do is just jump out the building quickly stop just behind them and then basically um jump back in when they get close but in this case Fulsham Jäger is just going to do the job so that is lovely stuff so plus one briefly for the knife guy, L6 has come in to try and take out this M5 half track. We can see this L6, that's trying to deal with things on the bottom side, excuse me about my voice. Yeah, that's Dagkown coming out for shots there, L6 does manage to get into cover, so no worries. What's going to happen here is the Staghound will win an engagement against the L6 if it tries to go for it at this range. And that's not good for Corbo, so he's going to have to just remain on the defensive down there. Pack 41 Gerlich has come in on the main road. That's going to be used to take out the M5 half track. Honestly, what Corbo can do is unload this Pack 41 quick, get the kill onto the half track, reload it into the Kubel MG, and shift it to the stop side if he needs to. That will then get rid of a lot of the fire support on this main road that's currently doing a lot of damage to these Fulsham Jaegers. L6 does manage to find line of sight onto the M5 half track, gets the internal fragment, which means that that half track's no longer going to be a significant threat. Forcing back this M5 half track into the orchard does allow the Fulsham Jaegers to push forwards, and if they spot any infantry, the L6 can help pin those down. So nice moves there by Corbo. We hear the M5 half track really going for that surrender onto the Fulsham Jaegers, but Corbo knows better. He is not going to let that happen. Pack 41 now going to be moving in, a new Pack 41 coming into the top side because. Corbo's noticed that there's like three half tracks here that he needs to take care of. I think he's killed off one, but uh, definitely needs another pack 41 for the top side if he wants to maintain his element of surprise. This M5 half track does get bailed out. The Fulsham is now going to be engaging motorized rifles at range. And this 3 inch mortar, can it find a kill onto the pack 41? We'll have to wait and see. Currently, I don't think it's going to hit the mark. Has forced back the Kubel MG though, so removes some of the options of Corbo changing the position there. HS129 comes into the bottom side, takes out the Staghound, the knife guy enjoyed that one. Loves it when the duck spoils his day. Now the L6 is free to move forwards. That's going to be surrendering the motorized rifles. The L6 is looking for the kill onto the M5 half track to get rid of some of the front line there. Fulsham Panzer Abwehr can probably push forwards and spot the Desert Rats. You can see that these Fulsham Panzer Abwehr have moved out of the windmill, which is interesting. Kubel MG, uh, that has dropped off the Pack 41. That Pack 41 now going to be looking for the shots onto the Stuart Remy and the Crusader AA, but they missed both of the shots. And that is devastating for Corbo. Really, really bad. But this Fulsham Panzer Abwehr changing position is really, really smart because now he might be able to find the kill onto the Stuart 5, but uh, HS129, that's going to be coming in, looking for a shot onto the Crusader AA Mark II early on. If he can find at least one of those kills, and he maintains two HS129s in the air, then that could definitely open up opportunities for him. Now, the M5 half track does get killed here, not by the L6, but by the Fulsham Jaegers. Um, the pa Fulsham Panzer Abwehr are pushing forwards. Desert Rats are going to be engaging those 
though, and honestly, the Fortune Pounds out there are likely to die because the Desert Rats are in heavy cover. So the L6 got a lot of work to do, and the Desert Rats can smoke themselves off again. But uh, Desert Rat's going to trade for Falsham Pans Abvia. I think uh, the knife guy will take that. Oh, Falsham Jaegers or Falsham Pans Abvia on the top side do get found as the Crusader AA Mark II drives straight into it. And unfortunately, just gets a crew wound from the Panzerfaust. So the Crusader AA remains alive, remains uh, firing at that uh, infantry unit. And yeah. Fortune Pans Abwehr had dealt with. So after what was a very smart move from Corbo, he didn't really have it pay off. And that really sucks for him because he doesn't have the opportunity to really ambush again on that top side um, unless he relies on Panzerfaust. And I don't see that very often from Corbo. Um, so he's going to have to rely on these pack 41s. L6 on this main road is going to do a runner as there is a Stuart 5 and a Staghound coming up. If he can get out of 1,000 meter range, then he will be okay. It's funny how this M5 half track, though, is, is chasing him down. This L6 just getting the hell out of Dodge, breaking the line of sight, kills the half track in the process. That was very amusing. Interesting stuff. But 51% uh, for the knife guy. Did briefly have much more than that. But now that these. Desert Rats have been surrounded in the mid, and these Forschmegas are making a little bit of ground. Corbo's bringing it back, that's for sure. These Forschmegas are going to be forced away. Motorized rifles moving into that tree line do have more HE than the Forschmegas. But this is real scary for the knife guy, or for Corbo, sorry. Um, because these, these are a lot of powerful units in phase A against what Corbo has to offer. This Pack 41 has a lot of work to do. There's another one coming in. And honestly, I'd like to see that go to the top side and accompany the other Pack 41 here and then have this sort of command in between the two so they're both two-star veterans. See, that would be fantastic. He could also, of course, go for the kill onto these Crusader AAs. That would be another choice. But at the moment, it looks like these are both going to cross in front of the Crusader AAs. Looks like Corbo's Notice going to unload those. Bolshemiegas, they're going to take a lot of damage from these Desert Rats at close range, but uh, the Desert Rats are probably not going to find the Surrender, but will definitely kill off the Bolshemiegas. L6 going to be engaging the Staghound at close range. Needs to get close if it wants to do the job, and does manage to get the track wheel damage, which is a start. One crit critical definitely helping uh, pin down the L6, but the Piat's going to be coming in, and that is a dead L6. Another duck comes in on the top side, takes out the Stuart. This Pack 41 really struggling to engage the Crusader AA on this bottom side. Oh, the Stuart 5 just freely rolling through as the L6 has been dealt with. And of course, motorized rifles can be moving forwards as well. Still a plus one for the knife guy. Porsche Miege is absolutely demolishing these motorized rifles in the mid. Corbo is holding on, and we've seen him come back from worse. So we'll have to wait and see if the knife guy can seal the deal. He's certainly investing a lot in his AA. And eventually it's going to get to the point where he has so many Crusader AAs that these HS129s that come in will be killed off if they do not find successful airstrikes. In this case, motorized rifles are actually going to end up winning against Volshimiegas at close range due to the M5 half track. These Volshimiegas, though, ripping to shreds those motorized rifles, Stuart 5 coming back to provide some fire support. L6 here, covered by the uh, Staghound at the moment, so that can't really move. Unless it's going to be forced to take an unfavorable engagement, which Corpo probably doesn't want to do. Yeah, that's Stuart 5 definitely looking for shots onto the Falsham Jaegers, but two more Desert Rats arriving. We have moved into Phase B, so the Knife Guy has more availability. And, uh, well, nice kill for the Pack 41 up here. Used the uh, Orchard very well to only show line of sight to one Crusader AA at a time, and that uh, secures the kill at that range, which is good for Corbo, because what he needs to do is kill off these armoured AA units. 
Because otherwise, his air force is never going to be as effective as he wants it to be. Anyway, on this bottom side, the uh, Falschirm Jaegers, they I think took another shot at the motorized rifles. The Stuart 5, briefly going to get line of sight, but uh, not getting the kill. Desert Rats did get up in the face of the L6. It really had nowhere to go. But the Pack 41 is going to find a kill onto the second Crusader AI up here. But that does not mean that the knife guy has none left because he's actually got two Crusader AAs left on the field with one star veterancy and the Bofors Bore T with the two star veterancy. And that is more than enough to shoot down an aircraft. So Corbo's coming in here with his uh, Falsham Jaegers. He is going to spot these Motrize rifle leaders. He's going to just fall back a little bit so he can get his MG on target. Smart move by Corbo there will allow him to win that engagement he hopes. There is a, another Fortune Jaeger on the way. Still a plus one for the knife guy though. These motorized rifles do get taken out. These ones, these Fortune Jaegers, they took him a lot of damage. This Stuart 5 really causing issues on the bottom side and Corbo's had enough. In comes the HS129. It really wants to find the kill. Oh, you can see that Corbo did turn off the gun and then turn it on at close range. So, yeah, fantastic job. Now it's going to come over for a shot onto the AA in the mid. Never mind. Corbo realizes there is a lot there, and you can just see how many shots this HS129 is taking as it flies away from that engagement. ME109G6R, so it's going to maintain its place. However, can't really fly to this top side without getting hit by this AA. So, it does definitely take away a lot of its effectiveness against the units currently on the field. These Falsham Jaegers though, they're going to unload ideal range really to engage these motorized rifles, but the motorized rifles did get into cover and that's going to make a big difference about how much damage and suppression they take. That count in the meantime in the mid is going to be pinning down the Falsham Jaegers. We can see that these Desert Rats and motorized rifles are going to be doing a lot of damage to the Falsham Jaegers. The HS129 kills another Staghound. And uh, that is a nice, nice job there by Corbo. Still finding kills regardless of the overwhelming AA that the knife guy is investing upon. Now if these were Bofors and such, then I reckon we would have seen off-map by now. But since the Crusader AAs are armoured, the off-map is going to be much less effective and that would usually be Corbo's answer. So what he can only do now is maybe just invest in a lot of HS129s to the point where he can overwhelm enemy AA. But if he doesn't now and his HS129 remains over this area, they are going down. The knife guy is just setting up a nice air network or anti-air network that can cover the top side of the map and it's very very smart keeping all his AA in the same place so it can never be overwhelmed like I just mentioned. But here come the SBW AV41s and Corbo certainly knows how to exploit these units and use their mobility to take advantage across the map. But currently the knife guys sort of concentrated push is starting to really pay off. He's got a lot of units in the same place and this is going to allow him to concentrate on breaking through the forces that are sent his way whilst also covering it all with this AA that he has. So this Bofors Porty, it's, it's moved to a pretty odd position but I think it's just trying to get out of line of sight of the SPW AB41s because he doesn't want to lose those unnecessarily. One thing that Corbo doesn't want to do though is lose Falschermiega unnecessarily and that's certainly what he did there. It looked like a Falschermiega went down before it unloaded. Uh, that's not good at all. I'm assuming Corbo was just microing elsewhere and didn't notice. Uh, but either way, Foshimega is going to be engaging motorized rifles from a distance. Desert Rats also getting involved with their Brens though. Foshimegas are holding a little bit of ground on the bottom side, but uh, nothing substantial. SBW AB41 going to be engaging that half track at close range and wiping that out. So I think there are 
chances now for Corbo to break back, especially on this bottom side. But on this top side, without the use of his air force, Corbo's going to struggle for sure. Because he only has a limited amount of armour that he can rely upon. And that can be straight up countered by things like three star fireflies, which the 7th armoured do have access to if they bring command as well. This SBW AB41 though, been used pretty well so far. Definitely cleaning up a few units here and there. Same deal on this top side. Staying out of line of sight of anything threatening and just uh, picking off the units that they can. So smartly done by Corbo so far. And with it only being a plus one for the knife guy, there is plenty of room for Corbo to come back in the late game if that's what he relies upon in this case. Because one thing that the third Fulcher Jäger do have in phase C compared to the seventh armoured is an extremely good economy. They have the 145 points per minute compared to the 110 from the 7th Armoured because the 7th Armoured peak quite early and uh, drop off hard into Phase C in terms of economy which definitely uh, affects their ability to afford things like those 3 star fireflies. But then again if you're not really doing too much damage then it might not matter. This pack 41 that's going to be uh, killing off one of the half tracks. It's going to have to find a shot onto a second, however, but and is already coming under a lot of fire. Fulshimegas did get surrendered on that top side. HS129 going to be coming in there. Going to just be trying to pop these HS or these M5 half tracks so that the Fulshimega and pack 41 are safe. By doing so, um, he can kind of just hold the line there for the time being. Just makes things very awkward for the knife guy to advance. But the knife guys now come in with six pounders. And uh, those are going to be able to help mop up some of these SBW AB41s possibly. For example on this bottom side the two star six pounder uh, will be able to kill off this SBW AB41. It's got two star veterancy as well. Um, so that's going to be a pretty accurate shot. This Volshimega though is going to get a Panzerfaust off. Takes out that half track now going to be able to use its MGs at range onto the motorized rifles so with the half track gone yeah, it makes pushing a lot harder for the knife guy because generally you use things like half tracks to find surrenders after you pin down enemy units but there's not a single mobile unit on this top side that can really exploit this pinned AT gun and uh, the Fallschirmjägers but it looks like the motorized rifles might end up doing the job regardless. This SBW AB41, it's going to try and get behind cover, but gets forced to fall back first. And the second shot hits, and that's going to be a transmission damage. Not much else that uh, Corbo can do there. But he can try and get a kill with the HS129. Comes in, unfortunately, just bouncing off the front side of the Stuart 5. But the SBW AB41 going to be going for the push onto that Stuart. Six pounder, however, has been brought in. Going to cover that uh, retreat and uh, nicely done by the knife guy to have that support on hand uh, to make sure that he doesn't lose any units unnecessarily. So very very uh, interesting game so far from both players. I feel like Corbo's been losing out however and is definitely going to be limited on his infantry availability into the late game and that could affect um, his ability to stay in the game in general. Um, the knife guys kind of focus a lot of his points in this AA we can see that the Bofors Porti did go down, so that's a really nice kill uh, for Corbo. Because these two star Bofors Portis are like super long range and really accurate, and they can be really irritating, especially for things like HS129s. But taking one out makes it considerably easier to clean up like these Crusader AAs and the Bofors Portis and so on. This HS129, that's going to be looking for a cheeky kill onto the M5 half track, maybe, or it's just coming in from this bottom side to get the shot onto the Stuart 5. Can it find the kill this time around? Yes, it can. Great job by the duck there. As it retreats, though, it's flying over AA, and that is a very dead HS129. There it goes. Yeah, ideally, I think Corbo should have microed the HS129 away from where he knows the AA is. Or maybe he didn't realize how much was there and, and, and now just marked it on the map so he doesn't make the same mistake again. But either way, uh, coming downwards and uh, retreating this way with his aircraft would have probably been a better idea anyway. But um, there we go. 
4.2 inch mortar now coming in on this top side. Two star veterancy is definitely going to pin down these units very quickly indeed. But Volshimegas holding back two units of motorized rifles on their lonesome. But as you can see, these Volshimegas slowly but surely getting overwhelmed. And they're getting hit by mortar fire in the middle. They're getting just completely outnumbered here as well with these multiple rifles units. And that's going to open up a lot of opportunities for a breakthrough for the knife guy. But SPW AB41s are on the way again. But Corbo really needs something that can pin these six pounders or kill them off from range because usually he would rely on his fighters. But I'm not sure that that's such a great idea, especially knowing that there is so much AA on the map. So it's not something that I reckon. Corbo will go for. But either way, HS129 still going to be taking shots at the Cromwell 4 at the front here. Uh, that's going to take a weapon jam. I think this HS129 has a possibility of going down, but it really depends. I don't think it's going to be under fire for long enough, no. So it is going to survive. But the Cromwell 4 out of commission as that weapon jam does remove its uh, capabilities. Uh, Volshimegas that were brought in. Did put up a valiant attempt, but uh, unloaded in front of four rifle squads, five rifle squads actually. And uh, yeah, of course they're going to run away. That's 50 men versus 10 at the end of the day. This SBW AB41 going to be forced back by the mortar. L6 on the top side has recovered. That's going to be chewing up those motorized rifles that finally managed to beat through the Volshimegas, but just going to die in vain anyway. Um, Stug 3s are now on the way though. Corbo is looking desperate to find a way back into this one because the knife guy's really sort of stabilized into the mid game and has enough AA to cover a significant push on this top side and that's something that uh, he can really take advantage of but of course with the Cromwell 7 or Cromwell 4 sorry uh, having a weapon jam that's going to make a bit of a delay that uh, Corbo can maybe take advantage of so we'll have to wait and see but on this bottom side things looking awfully light for Corbo and uh, this SBW AB41, it might be able to clean up some of the rifles, but the six pounder, of course, still there. Look at these rifles, there's so many of them. Now the Stuart 5 also going to be coming in. Half track looking for the surrender here. These Volshimjägers have to hit that Panzerfaust, and they do. So that's a nice job there, done by Corbo. But the Volshimig is in the mid. They've been broken. Huge salient now. Showing up. Crusader AAs were forced to reload. And the ME109G6R6 does get out alive after it was strafing a unit on this top side. Not entirely sure what it was going for. Maybe this uh, the six pounder. But with the Stug 3 coming in it is going to get a shot on the Crusader AA. And honestly if Corbo can find kills onto a few of these AA units. It will definitely weaken the knife guy enough that the HS129s can start to pick off um, AA on their own. And then that opens up all sorts of opportunities for Corbo. So can he do it again? We'll have to wait and see. This Stuart 5, vulnerable on its own at the bottom. Duck takes care of that. There is, however, still a Stuart Recce. And that is just as much a threat to these Falschimjägers. It doesn't have the recon capability that the knife guy would like to have but uh, still can use its 30 cal and 50 cal uh, to do the damage. On this top side, uh, Stug 3, can it find line of sight onto another Crusader AA? Remains to be seen. SBW AB41 though, that can run down all of these rifles if it wants to. Since the rifles don't have any piots, they get taken out so damn easy by the 20mm auto cannon and that machine gun. Now one of the Volshimegas did fall here. It looks like this Volshimega managed to get a weapon jam onto the Stuart Recce, removing the pressure that that was having. But with multiple rifles getting Bren guns on target, surely it's not going to be long until the Volshimega goes down. And again, this SBW AB41, it's going to just be parked up right next to these rifles, shooting them right in the face. And more infantry is on the way. These Stugs are actually making quite a lot of ground. But with this Cromwell 4 having its weapon jam fixed, this Stug 3 needs to be worried, especially under fire from so much AA. 
Porsche Meg is pushing hard on that top side now. Pushing through a salient that they've found. And honestly, if they can get into the face of the 4.2 inch mortar, that would be a nice kill for a Porsche Meg to find. These Porsche Megas in the meantime are going to be killing off these motorized rifles. Stug 3, can it find the kill onto the Cromwell 4 at close range? No, it cannot. Cromwell 4, can it reply? The knife guy not going to let it. Surprised he didn't let it fire there, but uh, either way, um, both Stugs going to remain alive for Corbo for now, but one of the Stugs is falling back, and it has turned around, so it is showing rear armor, and with a two-star Cromwell, has the potential to find a side shot, but never mind. Rifles just surrender that straight up, since there's no command nearby. Um, looks like the mortar got the better of the Falschmjägers in the end. Just going to be mortaring those as they unload in their face. Falschmjäger is going to be going down there. The AA and the Cromwell 4 getting involved. Absolutely rips them to shreds. HS129 now coming in on the bottom side. The SBW AB41 does take care of the Stuart Recce. This HS129 is looking for the Cromwell 7 kill. It's not going to find it, however, as he lost line of sight. The SBW AB41s can still rush up to a Cromwell 6 and possibly find a kill. But with a 6-pounder on this main road, that's going to internal fragment the SBW AB41 and removes that as a threat. Second shot finds the kill. ME109 coming in with a strafing run. Going to be a little bit too late, though, to uh, save that armoured vehicle and... As you can see, well, things not looking good for Corbo. With that first stug going down, the second one's going to follow. And now there's only one left that's really making a difference. And the knife guy getting confident enough to bring in his own Mosquito. Might have to be a little bit careful. He does have some AA left. This one's been weapon jammed, however. Will get fixed up by the Bedford Supply. But the Crusader AA Mark II up here in the Boifers Porti, that's going to be interesting. Um, whether that's enough not to get overwhelmed by HS129s, we'll have to wait and see. Because one thing that could happen is HS129s come in to target the AA, and then the ME109s don't get targeted by the AA because the AA is targeting the HS129s, and then the Mosquito goes down. But in this case... The ME109 tries to take the engagement with the Mosquito, gets hit by the AA. Mosquito has got on the tail of the ME109, but I'm not sure it's going to be there in time. Now Corbo coming in with his own ME109 and is likely to find the kill, honestly. The ME109 here can outturn a Mosquito any day. And there we go, Mosquito goes down. So the SBW AB41, that's going to be looking for more kills onto infantry. Falschimegas. Or Fortune Pioneers, sorry, coming in to reinforce. And we can see that Stug 3 is trying to take an engagement with the Cromwell 4 and the 6-pounder. It's probably not what Corbo would like to do up there. But all the while, the knife guy has maintained a plus 1. Currently, it's ticking up to 1,655 points. So regardless of all of these successful HS129 strikes that Corbo has had, the knife guy has consistently done damage on the ground. That has been enough to hold um, his sort of front line forwards. Another duck kill up here. The knife guy certainly loving those when they come in. Kills a Cromwell 6. Nothing too spectacular. Another HS 129 kill onto a Cromwell 6 on the bottom side. I'm just worried though that uh, regardless of all these kills with the HS 129s. There isn't too much armoured support left for Corbo to take advantage of the infantry and stuff that's left behind. Saying that, things are looking awfully light now for the knife guy, especially con uh, con like compared to the mid game, where the knife guy had so many forces up there on this top side, so much AA. Now all he's got left is a Crusader AA, the both his portees gone down. And he's also got a Crusader AA back here, but uh, that was Weapon Jam previously. So yeah, looking light up here. Seven minutes left, or eight minutes, sorry, left on the clock. All of the units of uh, the Knife Guard on this bottom side have been surrounded. So we're back to a 50-50. This Stug 3, however, has a lot of weight on its shoulders, and it's going to get internal fragmented by the two-star Cromwell 4. Not really an engagement you want to take at that range. The Cromwell 4 obviously going to have the better 
accuracy and also the better aim time since the Stug is self-propelled. So not an ideal engagement there for Corbo and now Corbo is going to have to invest in supply if he wants to fix that up and give it some more ammo. Meanwhile though, oh, nasty kill there. Six pounder takes out a falchion pioneer before unloads. Can't help but feel Corbo's under a lot of pressure right now. He has suffered two kills now on his infantry before it's unloaded, which is not fantastic. But that AT gun finally going to go down here. The Desert Rats maybe to follow, but never mind. Uh, Desert Rats are going to be able to fall back. Abadid Chantry has come in. 4.2 inch mortar has also arrived to help pin some of this infantry as well. The Abbot of Chantry will be a really good unit to stop things like this L6 from being effective. So I like the choice of that by the knife guy. These Fulgian Pioneers, they've tried to take on the six pounder, but are going to get hit by a mortar from the top side. And now the six pounder might even be able to surrender the Fulgian Pioneers. That would be certainly quite hilarious. But the ME109 G6 is going to come in for the strafing run. Not going to let that happen. Mortified does come in again, however. That's going to be continuing to pin the Fulgian Pioneers. The ME109 can probably just go around and, and kill that off. So it's not the end of the world. But we can see, finally, a plus one on the board for Corbo. His extra income is certainly starting to pay off. HS129 is going to come in to try and deal with the Abbot of Chantry. Once that's down... The L6 can zoom up the road and try and find some more space. But uh, it really does depend whether or not the HS129 gets the kill. It certainly does. One star veterancy. Going to make sure that it's very accurate. Now the HS129 coming in for the kill in the mid. However, going to fly directly over the top of a Crusader AA Mark II. This Crusader AA Mark II, that's going to be coming under fire from the HS129. Loses line of sight though. So it does not manage to fire off its main gun, and that is not ideal for the HS129, because if it had managed to pick off that Crusader AA on its own, then that could have opened up even more kills on the top side and even more ground for Corbo. So Corbo is looking for probably a plus four at this point in order to win. There's like five minutes left on the clock. So Corbo, I don't know if he's going to be able to make it work. This HS129 could probably just leave and come back in a couple seconds later, but I'm not entirely sure that Corbo wants to do that because there is so little time left on the clock. Now, the Stug 3 did get some reload from the old Kubel there, but Stug 3... I mean, it, it got its ammunition, but the Kubel went down. HS129 is going to be told to fall back. ME109 is going to be covering the advance here. Cromwell 7 has come in to kind of blunt this L6 push. At close range, the L6 might be able to do some damage to the Cromwell 7. Not in the front arm, it would need to be like a side armor shot. Uh, that command, it is going to unload. Looks like Corbo's throwing everything he's got at this salient. Yep, that Cromwell 7 just shrugged off the. Uh, Hit at close range. The Fulgian Fuhrer unloading in the face of the Cromwell 7 to try and find the kill. Cheeky try, but didn't quite work. Mortar does go down. L6 in the mid. Going to be engaging the Crusader AA Mark II. But uh, not going to be able to find the kill onto that because the L6 got forced back. New Stug 3 is on the way. Plus 2 for Corbo. But again, it's going to need much more than that to win this game. Now there's only two reinforcement points for each side on Point de Hoc. So if he controls one, then they can maybe like surround this top side and just collapse that entirely to bring himself to like a plus five. Still not sure it'll be enough though. What an incredible fight this has been. The knife guy holding on on a knife edge, I would say. Because it's certainly been close. Close to the point where Corbo could have overwhelmed the knife guy's AA after the knife guy allowed some of it to be picked off by the Stugs when they came in. Now that HS129, it lost line of sight once again onto the Crusader AA, I would assume. Pack 41 Gerlich, however, going to get transmission damage onto that. 
gets the kill. HS129 not needed. Ocean Fjordos are going to be fishing forwards here, but I'm pretty sure Corbo's run out of infantry because there was no reason to bring in like two Ocean Fjordos to the bottom side. So he's working with what he's got, and I'm not sure it's going to be enough. There's like 2 minutes 15 seconds left on the map. Fantastic display with the third Ocean Jäger. Absolute determination to find uh, targets and make these HS129s effective regardless of the amount of AA his opponent brought in. He's going to find the kill onto the Cromwell 4 there. And you can see just how devastating these HS129s can be when they're allowed to fly around. There is one Crusader AA Mark II kind of saving the day there, otherwise this would likely be kills onto both the the Achilles and the Cromwell 7 as well. Saying that, I'm not sure either of those are visible, no, because of the amount of hedgerows that Point Hawk has to offer. Uh, we can see uh, the ME109 G6 coming in on the top side. That's going to be strafing that AT gun to death. Still 61% off map now coming in from the Cromwell 4 OPs. Just going to be looking for kills onto enemy infantry. And if he can just prevent the infantry from being a threat, then it's job done. And somehow, like, look at this map. How is that only 56% in favour of Corvo? That's pretty insane. Either way, the knife guy's making it happen. He's holding the, fr um, the front line even further back than normal with two Cromwell 4s and a Cromwell 7. Interesting stuff. 45 seconds left on the clock. HS129 has got line of sight onto a Cromwell 7. So going to be trying to go for that. Stug 3. Going to be pushing through on this top side. That's going to be looking to find the 4.2 inch mortar. And honestly, going to be a hell of a lot of kills and deaths in this game. On the bottom side here, M5 half track has brought in a 17 pounder, but there goes a 20 HE power grenade. Doesn't look like the pioneers managed to do the job. Plus three now for, for Corbo. Not even close. Five seconds left, four seconds left. And that's pretty much it. Crusader AA, the last AA, goes down in the end. And after 40 minutes, the knife guy is victorious nonetheless. What an incredible game. Absolutely amazing. So the knife guy probably bought his entire air tab in that. Tried to make an area where he could push from uh, with his forces. But in the end, because some of the AA got picked off, he left himself vulnerable even more so to those HS129s towards the end. But fortunately, he had counted up enough points by then. So the amount of kills that Corbo was getting didn't particularly matter as much. And you can see that being the case due to the 3,830 kills for Corbo to 2,995 losses. And of course, vice versa for the knife guy. So the knife guy, even regardless of being 900 points down or 900 kills down, Actually, it's more like 835, but there we go. Um, he still managed to win the game because his early aggression was enough. And I think he definitely took advantage of the phase B income to reinforce the things that he needed. So just more armor, more AA. And uh, regardless of the fact that some of it got picked off here and there, it still was enough to do the job. And a really, really high class match this was. Desert Rats, they did a nice job there. No real standout unit uh, for the 7th Armoured, honestly. These 6-pounders really did save the day, though, when it came to Corbo trying to counter-push at the start of Phase C. Um, in terms of losses, well, the HS129s, of course. Double Stag Count Stuart 5, Double Stuart 5, Cromwell 6. And we got the Stuart Remians and Reckies going down to that Pack 41. Nothing too crazy there. Another HS129 getting so many kills. They must have been really irritating to fight against. But the knife guy, probably very happy in his victory, will be moving on to the final. Corbo dropping down to the lower bracket. That's the last we've seen of him. 
Uh, fantastic display with the third Falsh Omega from Corbo. Really good job by the knife guy with the seventh armoured. What a fantastic game, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.